News Channel 15 presents Great News, the positive news show here to help brighten up your day. With host Bryce West, this is Great News. Hello and welcome back to Great News. I'm your host Bryce West here to give you the great news on this wonderful Wednesday. Back to school is always an adjustment, but this year it's been extra tough. That's why one florist in Maine is trying to make it a little brighter for teachers. Brian Sideliner has the story. I'm so glad I'm not a teacher, but I would like to thank them. <laughs> it's not even 7.30 on a Friday morning, and Barbara Corshane, owner of the Bud Connection in Ellsworth, is already on her fourth flower delivery. She's on a mission, showing appreciation to teachers all across Down East Maine, and she's got a long day ahead. We're doing 26 schools, uh, roughly 750 employees, and we have roughly 3,000 stems of flowers we're dispersing today. It's the best way she knows to say thank you to those in a profession that's become more challenging during the pandemic. We're in the feel-good business, so even in people's worst moments, flowers tend to be uplifting and make awesome. people feel good and bring joy. Isn't that nice? <laughs> the flowers are a donation from the Bud Connection with a sponsorship from Stanley Subaru in Trenton, who also helped with deliveries in Blue Hill. Teachers are one of the most underappreciated professions around. Um, you know, they're always struggling to make sure that their kids have what they need for education. So um, it's just our way to say, you know, thank you. Friday's flower delivery was a welcome surprise for teachers all throughout the Down East region, and it comes at the end of a strange and difficult first week of school. This will be the third school day that I've cried in a four-day week. I just think they need a little pick-me-up. <laughs> thank you so much. The hours that these teachers and our administrators, right from our janitors to our superintendent, have put in this summer to make the school year get off to a start. Like, yeah. there's been a lot of bumps in the road. Corshane is the first to say she can't help with textbooks or lesson plans, but she's happy to offer the thing she's best at. If we can just spread some joy, I'm all about the joy. I'm, the, I'm a joy spreader. Moving on, the inaugural uh, winner of the New York City Marathon retraced a lap of the original course Sunday. 80-year-old Gary Muckreich and his grandson ran the six-mile Central Park Loop. They did so to commemorate 50 years since that first race in 1970. Back then, only 55 runners finished compared to the 53,000 who did so last year. As for Murick, the he's still in that excellent motivates shape. motivates me, but I think that if I stopped running, I'd probably die. And I like the idea of being able to do things. I'm, I'm, I'm a little bit depressed that I am as old as I am, but I'm going to continue to run as long as I can. The original marathon consisted of four loops in the park. Now it spans all five boroughs of the city. This year's marathon was unfortunately canceled due to COVID-19. And some more great news. This young boy from Maine deserves to jump for joy right after he sits down to rest. Ten-year-old Jackson Welch has raised more than $3,600 for charity using his trampoline. He spent 24 hours jumping, eating, and sleeping on it to raise money for the annual Refuge League of Maine. When he and his family lost their cat, they donated the leftover food and toys to the organization. Then they adopted a new kid. I might try and do more 24-hour challenges, but not outside anymore because the heat is awful and the coldness is awful. Jackson's GoFundMe page isn't his first attempt to combine his love of animals and the internet. He says he posts videos of his kitten on YouTube regularly. And some more great news. During the summer, a 19-year-old pilot joined hundreds of firefighters battling the wildfires out, of, out west. She found that she was one of the few female pilots helping. Margaret Fole reports. Over 2.3 million acres in California, gone, this year alone. It's a battle being fought by thousands from the ground and from the air, and it includes a 19-year-old woman from Billings. I've been around airplanes and helicopters since I was, you know, pretty much since I was born. More specifically, when she was two weeks old. My mom always likes to tell me that she put me in a helicopter uh, 
two weeks after I was born to go to a party. And apparently everyone thought she was nuts. Blaine's been flying since she was 13. She and her father worked the SCU Lightning Complex fire in August. So far, it's burned nearly 397,000 acres in just 22 days. It was massive, one of the bigger fires I've ever been to. In fact, they were still relieving other flight crews right up until the day before Ashley started at Rocky Mountain College in Montana. I was there up until the day before orientation, which was the 30th. I got home at 2 in the morning and orientation was at 9 in the morning, so um, it, was a, it was a very busy evening. What started as a family affair turned into a passion. Her first fire season was last year. She's a co-pilot in the Chinook and a command pilot in the Blackhawk in a male-dominated field. You have briefings every morning at the fires where they talk about what you're going to be doing for the day. And I always think it's funny because you look around and there's like maybe two other girls there. Now that she's in college, there's not much time for fighting fires. Unfortunately, I can't get out on fires, uh, which is a bit of a bummer for me, especially with how the season's picked up. Especially while she's pursuing a degree in accounting. It's kind of boring compared to uh, flying, but yeah. useful. But this summer, as a pilot fighting California's second biggest wildfire in history, it's her piloting skills that have been especially useful. As of now, the SCU Lightning Complex, the wildfire that Ashley helped uh, battle, is 97% co contained. Cal Fire respects, uh, expects firefighters to have it under control by the weekend. It is so cool to see someone at such a young age making a difference in the world. With that being said, we're going to take a quick break. And right after this, we've got some big local news coming up next. And a look at our, uh, take a look at this segment right after this. Support provided by MotoRad, hosting a hiring event this weekend at its Mount Carmel, Illinois location. Those interested in full or part-time team member positions are invited to stop by 916 Empire Street in Mount Carmel Friday from 4 to 7 p.m. or Saturday from 9 to 2. You can apply and be interviewed all on the same day. MotoRad is hiring day and night shift positions, earning up to $18 per hour. Sign-on and referral bonuses are also offered, and positions also include a competitive and comprehensive benefits package. That's the MotoRad hiring event this weekend. It just takes a moment to spread from one person to another. So how do you break the germ cycle? Wash your hands often and always after coughing, <laughs> sneezing, handling food, and going to the bathroom. Lather the front, back, and in between for at least 20 seconds. If there's no soap or water available, use a hand sanitizer with at least 60% alcohol. Regularly disinfect common services, including your phone. These small things can help break the germ cycle. And a big local news story for today. Paxson Media Group has announced that several Southern Illinois newspapers will become a part of the same newspaper. The Mount Carmel Register, Only Daily Mail, Carmi Times, Clay County Advocate Press, the Newton Press Mentor, and the Tatopoulos Press will all combine into the Hometown Register newspaper, which will be mailed to subscribers on Tuesday and Fridays. The Hometown Register seems to give readers a much bigger look at the local news in our area, covering all of the major areas listed before. This is definitely a sign of the times here in our local area, and we are excited to see what this means for the future of our local news consumption. Robotic store clerks became become a virtual reality and did astronomers just find signs of life on Venus? Find out uh, coming up in today's Take a Look at This. Stores facing a labor shortage in Japan are looking for extra help, and robots may soon be the ones answering the call. Japanese startup Telexistence has rolled out prototype models of virtual reality-controlled robots designed to handle store labor. Wow! The future of convenience store clerking is now. The seven-foot bots are controlled by humans remotely and are capable of grasping objects like cans and bottles and such, and they move around on wheeled platforms outfitted with cameras and microphones, allowing them to interact with customers. The technology could allow one person to work several convenience stores at once. Wow, that is convenient. Speaking of weird, techy stuff, did astronomers just find signs of life on Venus? Well, researchers say they've detected traces of phosphine gas in the planet's atmosphere. On Earth, the flammable gas occurs when organic matter breaks down. It's also produced by bacteria that does not need oxygen, like organisms living in wetlands. That means it's possible something could be alive on Venus's scorching surface. But experts say other reasons may be more likely given the planet's extreme conditions. They hope to continue to study 
Earth's twin in search of a clearer explanation. Honestly, I'm just happy to see a planet other than you-know-who making gas-related headlines. For Take a Look at This, I'm Jeremy Roth. Don't go away, Ian Cleeler and myself have some personal great news right after this. News Channel 15 is now available on the Roku and Apple TV smart devices. Log on to Facebook.com slash My15News to learn more. So what's your story? Looking for a cost-effective way to begin your college career? One that's close to home? Or are you still unsure of a career direction? Here's the answer. The four Illinois Eastern Community Colleges. With 100 certificate and associate degrees in career and technical fields, many online and many transferable. Frontier Community, Lincoln Trail, Holly Central, Wabash Valley. Four colleges, one mission. Let us help write your life story. Check us out online at iecc.edu. Welcome back into the great news with our personal news segment. Ian, I understand you have some great news to share. Well, great news is I'm back. Yep. I uh, came back uh, last Thursday. Me and my family had to self-isolate due to COVID-19. My father, sadly, tested positive, and so we had to self-isolate. And a lot of people say that, you know, COVID-19 is uh, very, you know, it's kind of difficult. I mean, and I understand that. And my thing was is, uh, you know, being self-isolated, it kind of gives you a lot of boredom, but it also, you feel sick, you have a fever, and it's just, it's just really not, it wasn't great. I was, there were days where I was feeling fine, and then I was feeling sick, and, you know, I was like, oh man, I, could, I feel great, I could come back to school and all that, and yep. it was no, you, you, had, you had the fever. And it, it just really wasn't, it, it really wasn't great, but luckily my dad came back, uh, he fully recovered uh, this past, uh, last week actually, and I came back here last Thursday, went right back into doing uh, the sports here, and you know, it was just really great. Well, it's great to hear that you guys have had a full recovery in the Klingler household. And some more Klingler-related great news, my sister, Taylor Klingler, is having her 18th birthday today, an adult now. So that makes, that makes two of us. So happy birthday to Taylor as well. With that being said, that is going to wrap things up here on Great News. This has been Bryce West. That was Ian Klingler. Have a great night.